We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon Oh yeah, the red light is red, and Tom Scalzo is here. Hello. So is Ava. Hi. Charlie. Greetings. And me, Matt Farley, here, and we're going, um, we're going uh, rogue again. This is our traditional, our new tradition. Every February, we do uh, a romantic comedy or a melodrama or just something a little different, you know, and um. This qualifies. This is called. <laughs> this qualifies, I guess. It's called Murder on the Cape, and basically, the basically, what I've learned is, what I like about the horror movies we watch are just the melodrama, and now I'm getting <laughs> to the point where I could finding these movies where we avoid all the horror and, and just have the melodrama. <laughs> ah, it's fantastic. Avoid the middleman. All right. <laughs> Murder on the Cape opens with the dramatics. Oh, Charlie already has a also point. known as oh murder murder on Cape Cod. Okay, and Denton Harbor. Okay, I'll take murder, murder on the Cape is the best one probably. Yeah, I'd take murder yes. on Cape Cod, but you know murder on Cape Cod you'll take. Well, the, you want the familiarity that the locals say, like you get on the Cape. I guess so. I guess so. I hear you. Okay, You're gonna Thanks. go down Cape down Cape with his wife. <laughs> is that what he says <laughs> at some point? Mike yeah, went it's down Cape fun. with his yeah, wife. Just go down Cape. <laughs> no, they weren't looking for the boat. That was that yes, was. Yes, they were looking for the boat. And yet they selected a boat that was <laughs> in their own dock, right? And they, yes. we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, having, oh my God. It's a vague okay. trip. Okay. Opening scene, dramatic music uh, on the soundtrack, and we see the wimpy neighbor Peter dramatically approaching uh, the home where our heroine uh, is dead on the floor with her toddler sitting beside her. And um, what led to this madness is what we're all thinking. And uh, yeah. that's this what... is the thing we always talk about is done too much. Yeah, it's just the... start the movie at the beginning. Yeah. Here's a here's a tragedy. Let's see how we got there. Yeah. Like, well, I know it's going to go there. You don't have to, you know, that's just... the whole reason we're watching the movie. I hate I... it. I was I after we watched this, I said to Tom, this is like my least favorite narrative device. And I don't like it in books. I don't like it in movies. I don't like I'm like, and it's funny because I'm the kind of person who doesn't mind spoilers. Like I don't mind reading about the ending of something that doesn't usually bother me. But for whatever reason, I really dislike when as a narrative um, device, the, the a movie or a book starts like in the middle of an action sequence further down the line. Yeah, it's and then cheap. Like, it's totally cheap. It's too yes. cutesy too. It's like they think that this is this is gonna rock them. This is this is amazing. Rather than doing it just for the good of the story, it's more like I'm doing something amazing and cool. Yep, I feel the same way. A hundred percent. It's totally cheap and um and shameful. All right. I was, I was but in this movie, <laughs> it's fine. Somehow. At least we get to see Peter. You know, every time we see Peter is a uh, is a good moment. <laughs> uh, and Tom, we want t- Tom. Make sure you really get into that mic um, when you do talk into it. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so now, two years earlier, our hero um, Mike is driving his truck with Sammy, the local uh, no good drug dealer. Um, they're delivering wood to Elizabeth. Um, his name is Mike Luna. Is that right? Luna? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I and believe so. Sammy is the loser. Um, and Mike tells Sammy to stack the firewood, uh, that they're delivering and so that he can go into Elizabeth's house. Yes, Charlie. It, it, it this is, Sammy has such the character of the guy in the room who says me underwears <laughs> like his his uh exactly. he's he's so animated and it's very hard to pinpoint what his you know what his deal is if he's tough if he's jokey it, it, it's it's unbelievable but yes that's this is the first instance of where i had a note that's like oh my gosh so room like here this guy i love it yeah i love yeah. all these characters this is my fourth time watching it and i'm really starting to 
get to know a lot of the uh, the <laughs> extended characters uh, coming. Th- He's like the, the gentle version of a bad guy because he also has like this Britney Spears like style slouchy cap on later i like like, him i like him i mean he really (laughs) does he totally does (laughs) i don't yeah he's a he's a nice guy though yeah at heart he He is nice at heart he's i you know he's like that typical you know i I don't know how else to like but it's a very like massachusetts oh yeah character (laughs) it's authentic it's very authentic very authentic. Yes. I was like, you know, like this guy, it's like one of those weird dudes in Southie. And you're like, I kind of don't want to stand too close to you. Yeah, but he's got but a. you are kind of nice. He's got a heart of gold. He'll bring the baby into the house and leave it with its dead mother. You know, that, that's the kind of guy he is. How does he not, how does he not notice his backpack is in the car when he's taking the baby out? And how did he not check the car to begin with? You know? Oh, oh. Good questions. All good questions. <laughs> We're going to get there. <laughs> okay. Um, so he goes in, and uh, he helps her start the fire in her fireplace. Um, and then they get to know each other. And um, This pace here. We're going to listen to it. We're going to listen to this pace. This is good stuff. It's so fast. Get ready. You should burn all night. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you from here? Third generation fisherman. Days are short here in the winter, so I cut wood for extra money. Mm. You? I'm a writer. Lots of those around here. Yeah, well, it's a great place to come for inspiration. But I'm not that kind of writer. I'm from New York. I I write about fashion. You can see I I know a lot about fashion. I don't know anything about fishing, so we're even. But uh, you could be interested. I don't think you'd like fishing. Why not? It's cold on the boat. It's beautiful, but dangerous. You get eight hours of chop like this, and you have to keep your wits about you. Things could change in a minute, and you have to be ready. Just you and the sea. Sounds kind of lonely. No, it's it's the exact opposite. But you know what's lonely is is being around town with a bunch of people that don't get you. That's lonely. You feel like people in town don't get you? Just wish I was still fishing. So why don't you? Everything changes, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh hi doggy oh Every- thanks Tommy you're my favorite customer alright <laughs> everything changes right like, like no true no, no. I, what, what? <laughs> they're so, so but like what is ta- like we're gonna get into it like his wife's sister sold his boat um like what are the details we just don't know the details of that s- situation I guess oh, right and- oh. <laughs> okay I'm not that kind of writer. Is that that whole thing there is fantastic? So what? There's a lot of writers around here, so that means like the Cape. You're supposed to know that the Cape has like novelists or something. And when she says I'm not that kind of writer, is that what she means? That's what yes. she means. I yes. So. I mean that's the implication, right? Like that's that there are a lot of writers in on the coast of you know New England. Yeah. And- yeah. But she's just writing about fashion. She's not writing a novel, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that but, part's funny though. It's a little odd. Oh, it's great. And then when he's talking, when here. he's talking about the sea, oh, that's so good. Be, for this guy to be poetic about anything, you know, it's great um, to hear that that juxtapos- juxtaposition. Um, but yeah, and like you said, Charlie, there's just so much information just being shot back and forth, and um, all of it is a little preposterous, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's great too. Oh, they, they, I think they're very well cast, and I think they do a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom, Actually, Tom, it's ridiculous, you... but I, I buy the casting and they their the way they, it works somehow, despite the fact that it's edited too quickly altogether and there's too much information going on. I'll take it. I mean, it's entertaining. You know, it's uh, funny. Yeah. yeah, I want there well, to be more. It's I... great. I... At least these two actors actually had real chemistry, too. Yes. So, like, you could buy that aspect of it. Um, I think the larger, the biggest, the the one actor I had the hardest time with was actually his wife. Oh, yeah. Um, but then when you realize who she is in the grand production scheme of things, it makes sense that she would be the, like, weak link. Yeah. Explain. What do you mean by the grand production? Well, she's the wife of the director. Oh. This is why 
Her I... and the lead guy never kiss. Oh, interesting. Even though they're married. Ah, wow, you did some research. That's good stuff. I, mm -hmm. I didn't have to do research, Farley. It literally, like, the opening scene is, like, Eggly Productions, yeah. and then, like, she's second billed as Heather Eggly, and I was like, oh, this is an Artur-like situation. And then later on, it's directed by, produced by, written by Heather Arthur Eggly or something. Ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so Mike uh, Mike has to leave and, and get back to delivering um, wood. Um, now we're on the docks where Carlos. Oh, I love Carlos, too. Oh, Carlos. Every character is awesome. He's an obnoxious fisherman, <laughs> and uh, he's celebrating a giant tuna that he caught. Mike, Mike's family is there just, like, you know, cheering him on. It's 857 <laughs> pounds dressed. And uh, yeah. Car Carlos is set for the winter, Tom. Do you, you, uh, you know about that? Yeah. In that, oh, that's weighing down on poor Mike. But but think about that. They say he's set for the winter, and yet he goes to great lengths to do illegal drug dealing at the same time. You know, yeah. What, oh. you got, take your fish and run with it, man. <laughs> when was he? Is he a drug lord the whole time, or does he pick that up later? That's a good <laughs> question. That's a it's unclear. Yeah. But Sammy uses a different name when he's questioned by the sheriff about who his, and he's yeah. supposed to tell him if anything changes. Yep. That oh, least convincing drug kingpin ever. <laughs> no, and, I think but, he's new to it. I think he's just like, hey, I want to turn it. turn my tuna money into even more. You know, it's, Carlos, he just can't help seen, himself. Have you ever seen The Wire? Like the drug <laughs> kingpin there. He's like a cool customer. And Carlos is not a cool customer. <laughs> He's like barely hanging on. He's a clown. <laughs> so are you telling me that Mike's family was there at the dock waiting to see the fish that would come in? Or did they hear that there was going to be a big fish and they went down there as like a spectator sport? Uh, the second or a third option that they were just kind of wandering about and noticed it. I don't know. but Okay. Okay, um, I enjoy it. She had enjoy just it. done her grocery shopping that she couldn't pay for. Oh, so maybe I can't she was wait for that scene. Depressed and wanted to see <laughs> free the, entertainment. The sea. You want to know how my day went? I think we're gonna hear that. Basically, we're gonna hear the whole movie because it's all okay. so quote worthy. <laughs> Charlie, I'm sorry. Thank you for calling on me. One more point. So, if you wanted to make the production design any more confusing at this point, meeting Mike's family and his kids, you could not have by putting this New York knit cap on the little boy. Is like any kid in Boston walks around wearing an, a, like a New York hat with like it has Nick's colors. I don't know why, but yeah. why is he wearing that cap? Ah, interesting. Good, good, good I don't think I don't they know, thought of it because later on when he does not wear the cap because he does not have it on in other scenes, yeah. he's got really curly blonde hair, yeah. and I was like, "Oh wow, that's the same!" Like it was, it was, it was startling enough. May like you know what? Maybe he got a haircut when they were and they were filming that scene, and they're like, "Oh, quick, we gotta throw something on his head because uh, he's curly the rest of the movie." Seriously, no. all they had was this New York cap. <laughs> that could be. Unless there's something like in the background, he, you know, he, the, the their family, like they have a connection with the New York fashion writer, like in the. I, I think you're reading. No, I think you're, okay. <laughs> you're reading. But anyway, yes, it it was certainly confusing for a Boston kid, area kid, or whatever, a Massachusetts kid to be running around with his New York cap on. I just don't think that happens. And you could have turned it inside out. Yeah, well, especially not in some fishing village on the Cape. And, uh, like, that's yes. not going to be New York <laughs> team. <laughs> whatever. All right. Um. Now this is a great scene right here. Is they get into the they get into the truck and it's just like. People just keep showing up. It, you know, Carlos is there talking, and then, well, I guess not a lot of people, but then Jimmy just shows up, like, in a, just a very convenient one after the other rapid fire, like, let's let's Ooh. convey let's convey a lot of plot here in this minute plus. And you're going to hear the kid, the son, talking about how his dad is also a good fisherman uh, to uh, amidst the conversation. So that, just sit back and enjoy everything that you learn in this minute. Ah, did you see that tuna? Nice work, Carlos. Nancy, let's go over to the brig tonight. Drinks are on me. Come on. Look, good job, <laughs> Carlos, but uh, I gotta get the family home. Good job, though. Sore loser. I caught way bigger fish than that. Nice work, Carlos. Now here comes He's Jimmy. He's caught really big whales before, like orca whales. 
Nancy? Hi. Kids? I think my dad caught the biggest fish I've ever caught. Mike? Jimmy, how you doing? I want you to work for me. I've got other plans, Jimmy. Such as? The cod will be running again soon. I'll be out there again. Not likely uh, Department of Fisheries is going to limit the catch again this season. Did you see what Carlos just caught? You know what's worse than bad luck? What? A fluke. A big catch when no one else is taking in anything. It makes you burn your fuel, roll the dice. That day's never going to come again. You know what? I'm going to be willing to roll those dice again. Kids, Nancy. Hi, <laughs> Oh, man, the pressure is mounting, huh? Yes. <laughs> I love the writing to say that something's a fluke when a fluke is actually a fish. It just adds this extra level of, like, weird confusion. <laughs> and the other thing is that uh, I thought it was hilarious that, um, well, I don't know. They're, maybe they're trying to paint him as a nice guy because he's the way he's saying, like, Carlos, good job. He kept saying it a lot of times, Mike did. You, you notice? Yeah. Minor, but... Um, but he's he's delusional, right? I mean, what is he has no plan. He just like vaguely wants to start fishing again, but um, that's it, right, yeah. Tom? Yeah. He has no he has no plan. No plan. He's just hoping things will turn around. You know, he doesn't have a, have a boat. Right. I know. So I I don't even if the fish start running again, what's he gonna do about it? I don't. It's not it's not going well, and yet he has like this brand new. Ford F-150 or something. That... Like, that is a nice truck yeah. that he is driving. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Good point. I did not think of that. There's almost, like, a subtext in this movie, too, about, like, what the Department of Fisheries is doing. There's a lot how... going on there, yeah. Yeah, What, what what's up with catch limits and uh, <laughs> the in, in, ins and outs of licensing and stuff like that? Well, and it was bizarre, though, because... A... From what I understand, like a, a local police department would not really be the ones overseeing what the Department of Fisheries does. <laughs> um, there, one is a sort of a state government issue, and the other one would be, you know, the local city police. So it was just very. It was. It's like a. It makes no sense. And what was hilarious was so um, the viewers the listeners won't be seeing this, but the the sheriffs, the police in this movie all wear these sort of windbreakers that say sheriff department on it. Um and they're right they're bright green. And there's so many instances where later on um the Mike talks about being the the seafood warden or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he keeps pointing to his his windbreaker, but his windbreaker says sheriff department, which makes like zero sense. Yeah. yeah, it's cheaper. We we let we let McHugh wear his sheriff cap when he wasn't a sheriff in uh, in all the movies, just because we had it. It's all we had. Yeah. All right, back home, Mike wonders if Nancy uh, set up that meeting with Jimmy, and um, things very quickly get tense. Um, let's. I'm sorry. We will. We're not going to hear the whole movie, but just all the great parts. And here, let's, fine. this let's, is enjoyable. <laughs> let's listen to this for five thousand dollars. What should we have done? Waited. A oh, we need to back up an inch there. Sorry. We, when talking about the sister, uh, <laughs> the sister selling the boat. Nancy, I'm not working for the town. Mike, it's been over a year. They still had that boat. Mike, the boat was sitting down at the pier, rotting. Your sister sold that boat for $5,000. What should we have done? Waited until it sank? You should have consulted with me first. Would you like to hear about my day? <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. I was at the checkout, and I didn't have enough money to pay for my groceries. I love just the tone, like the the emphasis it, it, on certain it's words. Tommy's, it's Tommy's girlfriend from the room. She does the same thing. Yeah. Yes. It's yes, Lisa. Yes, she does. It's so great. Don't you love it? Oh, we're going to hear more. And he hit me. You know the way she says that? It's the same It's the same thing. It's perfectly unnatural. Yeah, no one talks like this. I hate this. I hate it. My father was a fisherman, his father was a fisherman. They pulled whatever they could out of that sea. And I'm the only one that can't make it. There's nothing I can do about it. 
I hate this too. But you gotta take the job. Oh, melodrama. <laughs> So that's a dig at the fisheries, Department of Fisheries, right? Like the the, the older guys pull whatever they could out of the sea. Is that yeah. the, oh that they've they've um there's nothing left is what you're suggesting? Or or just that they could without restriction? Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Overregulated. Yeah. Mm. That was my take. That they're, yeah. they're complaining that it's overregulated. This is such a funny issue to be thinking about in this oh, you know romantic okay. murder thing. That so good. What are the cod doing? Get that in the script. But then, he's like, he's he has a job offer, you know. It, it make, okay, maybe it's not his dream, but it's it's not like he doesn't have an option. He's like, like there can't be a lot of job opportunities in this town, right? Yeah. And he's 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 given he's, he's like, if you want this job, you have it, and you have a lot of financial problems right now. Like take the job and it, yeah, and then it work your way to buy a boat. That he likes. Yeah, this is a very reasonable situation, and Jimmy is is just <laughs> bending over backwards for the guy, and Mike is so <laughs> ungrateful. Oh my goodness! All right, Mike goes out to play with his kids. Why? Because he is a great dad. He is okay. <laughs> Next yeah, day, you gotta hit that hit that point oh, a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> and, Oh, there's so much just like uh, double talk and just like clear so many contradictions that no one only I we acknowledge, you know, anyway, yep. next day, Mike goes to the docks to see if he can work for Carlos. <laughs> He'll do hey, anything he, legal he thinking yeah, I know. Mike, this is Mike's lowest point right here. Carlos I, is I, hung I, over, Charlie. And was Carlos offering him to be his assistant for real, or he's just teasing him? I think he meant it. I think he was going to at least pay him to go get him some Tylenol. Carlos is like, go get, I got a headache. Go give me a Tylenol. <laughs> Don't tell me how to run, what to do with my boat, Luna. He doesn't, <laughs> he never tried to tell you what to do with your boat. That must have been like a past grudge. Oh, in the next scene, poor Mike is confronted by a police officer who tells him sh that he's got to move his truck. This uh -oh. parking is for fishermen only. Uh -oh. oh, Mike refuses to move. Um, the officer is very reasonable. Her name is Meredith, and she's like, uh, "Well, you know, if you refuse to move it, it's gonna gonna have to tow it." She explains that it's it's gonna cost them to move it, and Mike is Mike is just a, a stubborn jerk, huh, guys? Yeah. Oh. He's like, yeah, go ahead and tow it. His <laughs> wife's probably like, we don't have any money. Like, go ahead and tow it. I'll pay the two hundred fifty dollars. Like, no, we don't. Don't do that. Then, yeah. thank God, Jimmy comes by. He intervenes. Um, Meredith makes a really good point. She's like, I, I don't know why you hire me. I don't know why you put up these signs if you don't want me to enforce the law. And I'm like, yeah, cheer, you know, hear, hear. Meredith is right. Uh, but Jimmy sends her off and then tells Mike that he's the new shellfish warden. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is angry and ungrateful. <laughs> um, so funny. Yeah. All right. Back home, Nancy is uh, is reading up on foreclosure when Mike comes home. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's happening. With, with sound, apparently, because she has headphones in. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But what is she listening to? And yeah, when, no, no, it could be like when it's time to foreclose a home. You want to, you know, like an infomercial. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Next day, Mike sees Elizabeth's wimpy neighbor Peter <laughs> digging for clams. His name is Peter Benedict. Oh, oh my, god. my god! This scene. He doesn't. This have, is the scene. This is the scene. This is the scene. <laughs> magic. It, it is magic. How long has he been out there? He's got like three clams. <laughs> Freezing. <laughs> no, no, he's fine. Yeah, Long I know he's he, perfectly let's, fine. Let's Until he's like fine, and then all of a sudden he has hypothermia. Severe <laughs> hypothermia. <laughs> it's so severe and so quick. I wasn't sure if he was faking. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'd give the movie that much credit, but I, I honestly wasn't sure if if he did that as a fake thing. And then who asked another man to put your hand in my <laughs> pockets to get my wallet? My hands are too cold to go in my pocket. It never happened. Never happened. 
Yeah, and oh. Peter's very reluctant, you know, very like, how dare you tell me not to dig for clams? You know, there's that kind of thing going on. And then Elizabeth just like appears, you know? And she yes. <laughs> just appears. And she's like, this man has hypothermia. And Mike is reasonable for once. He's like, he's fine. You know, <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> you're right, Mike. He is fine. So they go to Elizabeth's uh, to give him some hot tea, which, okay, so the tea has brandy in it, and that's why. Peter is like singing like sea shanties and stuff. He was covered fast. <laughs> it was so annoying, you know. I I don't oh. know what they're going for. I don't know what they're going for in that scene. But so I he, think they wanted it to really think that he had hypothermia and then have it be funny and charming that he got a little drunk. Oh God! So yeah, oh, that's he, what they were going for. So now he's holding court in her house, uh, singing, quoting Nelson Mandela, um, praising Elizabeth's success in the world of journalism. Uh, and Elizabeth walks Mike to the door, which is a great moment. Like, <laughs> like the door is right there. <laughs> he has no. The living room is maybe like two hundred square feet. Two, uh, yeah, like at most. So the 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 amount of like walking that needs to be done to this front door is very minimal. I thought she was gonna like go on the deck with him, but no. Just like let me just walk two steps uh, to the door with you, Mike. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Mike shows up at the station having sold only three licenses. Jimmy explains that Mike needs to go door-to-door, and of course, Mike is outraged. This is beneath him. He tries to quit, but Jimmy Jimmy's the most patient man on earth. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, he is. He, he gives Mike um, his first paycheck, and Mike angrily accepts it because <laughs> that's just the way he is. He's like, here, you won't get foreclosed on. <laughs> Fine, fine. <laughs> like, okay, let's talk about this because that foreclosure scene that happens a little bit earlier is the one and only time that this that they're in. Like, the, the, I mean, and besides the grocery conversation that also happened earlier, is that those are the real only two times that they actually talk about being in financial distress. Yeah. Once he starts working this this seafood warden job. <laughs> He, he it's like how I, I'm sorry. How much money is he actually making here? Like how how is this first week salary that much? That I just I was like this makes no sense. Yeah, this because week. his he only justifies his job by collecting these these licenses, which are only twenty five dollars each. Like, I, how many licenses is he gonna collect that he? A pays his own salary and then brings you know delivers some to the the town. Right. Um, there's a lots of very intricate uh, you know ins and outs of the business that they're not um, conveying to us well. But it, well, then a week later, his wife's like all on board with paying nine hundred dollars a month for a boat. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> what's happening? This, this yeah, like like a six figure job. <laughs> doling out uh... just wandering the beach like that's essentially his job is just wandering the beach oh and and scaring away the um the Those seagulls, seagulls yeah. <laughs> get out of here <laughs> the baby clam all right uh right on cue mike sees elizabeth at the beach again as he is um yelling at the seagulls and and she kind of helps them chase him away and that's kind of like them falling in love and it's beautiful um, but while that's happening, the tide comes in and they're trapped like in a sandbar. So yeah. she's got to, he's got to carry her over the water back to shore. Yeah. And naturally the moment they get back there, she just goes straight into the shower. Um, <laughs> the, the outdoor shower, shower. <laughs> the outdoor takes shower. Takes off her parka. <laughs> takes off her parka. It's like, okay, outdoor shower. Hadn't been swimming. As far as I know, had just been walking. Yep. So unnecessary. Yes. So unnecessary. But possible if she were setting this trap. So it, it it's ridiculous, but it's also possible. Okay, that it... so this raises a question. Does the movie hate Elizabeth? Are they portraying Elizabeth as an innocent victim or as like a bad person? You know what I'm saying? That she this was her evil plan from day one, um, to ruin the, the life the, the, the good life of Mike and um Whatever her name is. What What do you guys think? I don't think it was an evil plan. I think it's her plan to ha- have a family okay. at any cost. 
And any cut. So th- the movie kind of the movie kind of doesn't like her. I feel. Am I wrong? I mean, I think that there is uh, some bias against her, like as the other woman type. You know, she's she's, but but at, at the same time, I wouldn't say it's utterly unsympathetic to her. Also, like I, I it's just you know, <clears throat> she. She isn't portrayed necessarily in the best light, but she's also, you know, like, and I think they were trying to go for some, like, she's a little like Glenn Close, fatal attraction type, you know, like, you know, she's, 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 she out, she was out to seduce this married man. And then she starts, you know, calling him like crazy. And then, you know, like won't, like starts showing up in places where he's not expecting her. So I think that there is a little bit of that, but at the same time, you know, it, they don't fully commit to right. it. Right. That's exactly right. They just dabble in lots of directions, you, you know, could take it either way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, May, maybe every time she comes in from the beach, that's just what she does, but I don't know. I, there's a lot of times in this movie where I'm like, maybe that's what, someone could do but i don't know it's not clear this, doesn't, this, movies doesn't, are this, this guy that she just clear. met she, she, so she sends him off to get a towel uh and he uh he goes and gets it for her she comes out uh, oh did you have something ava or no i was just going to say i also just wanted to point out that that this is winter time that, that yeah. this is winter time on the cape so the fact that she I mean, granted, they're all wearing parkas or whatever, so already you're kind of clued into the fact that it is not warm out. Yeah. But we also Peter was just almost dead. we just had a scene <laughs> where someone had hypothermia, <laughs> had that hypothermia, and then she is disrobing in her like on her deck, and then taking. I'm not, you know, I, I don't think most outdoor showers have a lot of heated plumbing. No. Yeah. Yeah. That very good. Very very good point right there. <laughs> Yep. Um, so she comes out of the shower and just the towel. He kisses her. They go inside and consummate their love. Uh, and after that happens, he talks to her about the ocean. So yes. <laughs> we need to hear We need to hear some of that. <laughs> what are you thinking? The sound of the water. Makes me think of my boat. You miss it? Absolutely. We used to take three, four day trips, sometimes longer for sword pull into a safe harbor, sleep on the boat. It's nothing like being on a boat. It's, it's freedom. You don't feel free? Not like you. I bet you've been everywhere. What's your favorite place to dock your boat? That's easy. Gloucester, up the coast. Why Gloucester? Because fishermen are still treated like kings up there. It's good food, good hardworking people. It's paradise for anyone with a boat. So why don't you just get another boat? We need to make a t-shirt, Gloucester. Fishermen are still treated like kings out there. <laughs> I love it. Not only are they not necessarily treated like kings, they maybe never were. I don't know. I mean, like, like you know, I've been to Gloucester. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta check it out a little more. Maybe deeply. they are a little bit. They do have that statue there. <laughs> gotta ask around. I, I, I think, I think it's you know, they're. I wouldn't call them treated like kings. I think that they are idolized in a sort of like this is a true working man, like a very blue collar in a very blue collar way. So more so so than the Cape too. Yeah. Is like, that's what makes it sort of like, that's what makes it kind of hilarious. Cause I think it's like, that's it. They're idealized. Yes. And they're, they're revered for their, but it's more because of all the like hardworking qualities that a fisherman sort of embodies and not this. Yeah. uh, pampered that's not there. yeah yeah i mean treated like kings would be like you you are people are giving you tribute and you're wearing a jeweled crown and you're like having a jester amuse you i don't know it's, it's not that it but it's, it's funny it, to hear him say that is amazing it it feels like they 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 they're turning it up to the max of this fisherman boats kind of and I, tribute to these guys. I love the rapid fire of this back and oh. forth too. It's just like oh, there's no time to acknowledge anything that's been said. It's just next question. Let's, we're gonna hear <laughs> yeah. a little, a little more of this. 
and the music is wall to wall in this movie. I mean, I turned on the subtitles before, and it was like melancholy piano music, melancholy yeah. this. It, it literally said that. And same thing with is, coffee shop, don't you think? Coffee shop was the same way. Just uh, yeah, that adds a, a definite cheesy factor. That's not necessarily bad. It's just it is what it is. I mean, it's there, but just uh, give us a break, give us a breather. You know? Yeah, it is wall to wall with really pu- trying to push your buttons with this music. I, I- I mean, I think part of the issue, like, it's uh, it's all so melodramatic. So, like, the music is very melodramatic, and what's going on on screen is very melodramatic. And then you have the title, "Murder in the on the Cape," and it's not what you, you were expecting. Yeah, very. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, <laughs> it's not a, thr- a thriller or horror or anything. Let's hear a little more of this talk. What do you want? Family. I was an only child, so I didn't have brothers and sisters, and my cousins always had a lot of brothers and sisters, and I kind of always wanted to know what that would feel like, you know? Try having four brothers, sharing everything from soap, clothes, deodorant, girlfriends. Sometimes I wished I was an only child. I was close to my mom. We were like best friends. And then she passed away three years ago, and it's just been me. What about your father? Father? We don't talk about anything but money. It's the only conversation I think we've ever had. You should have a family. It's my family that saved me. Whatever I've done, whatever I was gonna do, my kids, they've washed all that clean. Made everything else seem insignificant. We should have a family. It's just not meant to be. The doctor said I couldn't have any children. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, wow. No, it's... no couple that just had an affair has ever had this conversation. <laughs> like, you know, you don't just start taunting the woman you had an affair with about your family. I you know. Outside from her. Also, like, like later on there's a scene where it seems like she's surprised to hear that he has a wife but in this scene he clearly implies that there is a family he has kids like and she doesn't like you say Farley there's no rapid there's this so rapid fire there's no never any time for follow up questions but like (laughs) I feel like you know you're in bed with some guy and he talks about his kids you'd be like wait a second what right yeah, she, yeah, she's she doesn't she's fine with it. She's fine with it. All right, uh, Mike leaves, and then oh, what a great character! The lady next door, she mm. she, she looks moral on, compass. The moral compass of the movie. She just looks on disapprovingly. Yeah. You, you have not seen the last of her, but okay, I'm gonna jump ahead. Is is she the same lady who's holding the baby near the end, Tom and Ava? No. Okay, no, different lady. Yeah. I yeah, thought the, I thought she would come back in in a more prominent way, but yeah, she's not. No, the the lady holding the baby at the end was. Just, I think we're just supposed to assume she's some sort of source, social service right. type. Okay, too bad. This lady's like a god figure who just you know watches <laughs> yeah. upon her her flock <laughs> that deck it's, out there. Yeah. She's the the unmoved mover. And has, oh yeah. She has any lines in the movie? Like you would think that. As a neighbor who sees everything, at a certain point, she would have been interviewed for, yeah. you know, all the happenings. But this movie does not actually go in that direction. So No. We it sets just... it up, though. It should have. <laughs> it sets it up for somewhere that it never goes. It... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She sees it, all the comings and goings and everything. And then it's never followed up. I kind of like it, though. It's just like she does not approve. That's it. You know, just yeah. check in with her. Still doesn't approve. All right. Good to know. All right. A lo- unnecessarily long poetic shot next of uh, Mike taking a shower. Do you guys notice that? Like from the water to Mike's face back up to the water, but very <laughs> <Yep>. slow. <laughs> <laughs> he was, yeah, I mean, the water reminds him of his boat. He's washing his sins clean. Uh, there's a lot going on there. Now he's at the docks again, and Elizabeth's there. She sneaks up on him, and they kiss. Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> Who has an affair? 
in a small town. Yeah, I know. It seems where, like they were planning to meet there too. It seems. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, it, and this is not the only scene where they are outside in the op- wide open. Yeah. Kit, like, like just making yeah. out. They're full on making out. Yeah. He, he's, he seems so surprised that this is possibly going to be a problem. Yeah, I know. He's <laughs> they're so not behind dumb. a tree. They're, they're not in his car. Yeah, it's it's insane. He's so dumb. Uh, okay, then at a family dinner, she calls him on the cell. He wants uh, She wants him to come over, so he tells his family that Jimmy needs him for something. Just something <laughs> out of the docks. He offers... <laughs> <laughs> no, no specifics. You know, Jimmy just needs me for just something. something docks. Like she wouldn't know. Apparently, she knows Jimmy. This, she next day she'd be like, "Well, what was the emergency down at the docks last night, Jimmy?" He'd say nothing. I know. <laughs> yes, ridiculous. Oh, all right. Uh, he's supposed to bring back um, a bottle of wine on his way home, but he he doesn't. Uh, when he does come home, he tells Nancy. Whew, excuse me. They'll take selfish emergency. <laughs> Not even like a, a a safety emergency, just a shellfish emergency. Also, can we just talk about how he leaves that that scene? He leaves the dinner. It's dark outside. When he meets up with Elizabeth, it is light outside. Uh... When he comes back home, it is the middle of the night, dark outside. <laughs> Mm, we've been, we've been there. it was like i mean there were multiple shots like this where you could tell what with it whenever, whenever they did the interior i mean like they clearly didn't have a lighting budget because there are scenes that are happen in the interior in the interior shots where you're just like this is so dark they really just obviously didn't have lights um yeah to, and then there are exterior shots where there was one where they clearly tried to put some sort of filter and they had filmed it in the daylight and they put some sort of filter over it to make it look dark, but it it just didn't look natural. It was just, like, there were all these things where I was just like, you could just see that these are not the like highest tech. Yeah. yeah. Overall though, it's got a pretty clean look though, you know, Absolutely. like lifetime movie style um, quality. So yeah. Yeah. it's got the gloss, but definitely there's uh there's, there's some issues here and there. Especially with continuity. Yeah, yeah. Because, because I don't think we talked about this, but 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 earlier when they when uh, when when Jim when Mike first accepts the clamming job from from Jimmy, where he takes the baby clams, uh-huh. there's that scene where they're talking by the by the trunk of Jimmy's car, and Jimmy has the two bolt uh, pails of clams. But then he then walks away without them, right? Without the 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 thing, and Jimmy closes his trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, you see him, and he's carrying the two pails, and you're like, ah, "Yep, they didn't have their continuity." Yes, yeah. very good point. No. Yes, yes, yep. yes. That's a good one. Now they're uh, okay. Now they're on the trip, the down Cape. the The phone keeps ringing. He doesn't answer the number. It's a it's a Los Angeles number. Did I dial it? Yes, I dialed it. I got a Google Voice um, uh, on the other end, kind of thing. Like this is a Google Voice number, and the number can't be reached. But I looked up the number, and I I didn't look up too deeply, but it seemed that it might be the phone number of a production company that was involved in the making of the movie. Mm. But um, just so you know, if you see a number in a movie, dial it. All right, folks? That's that's my lesson to all of you. Meanwhile, um, Elizabeth's wandering the docks. She sees good old Sammy. He gives her some drugs. No charge now. And he tells her Mike's down Cape with his wife. Um... Okay, so uh, should we get into this? What is the is the is the whole point of the trip to find a boat, or is it a trip, Tom? I thought it was a trip. Yeah, I think it's a trip, but I think they they saw a boat, or you know, exploring boat options was was a side part of the trip, maybe. But then they end up back home. Look, at, is it when they're talking about the nine hundred dollar a month boat? Is that in front of them at the time at that dock? Yes. Okay. At home. Okay. At home, I, the the whole the, the thing with the trip is weird because it's like one of the few times in the movie where these two actors, the two characters, are getting along and like seem sort of happy in their on screen relationship. Yeah. Um, but like still, still there is just zero chemistry between these two actors, oh, and yeah. like it's very hard to buy this idea that they have been in this marriage 
for you know yeah the daughter's 15 like, years mm. at least yeah 10 15 years at least i would think yeah and, and it's funny too because i think um the one thing i would say is that like i when i first when you first meet mike i didn't think he was th- that old like old enough to have a a kid that it, like it just seemed like i thought he was much younger yeah. and then i was like oh wait no he's supposed to be like you know a 40 year old guy at least yeah you know yeah and but he didn't read that way to me on 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 the screen yeah mm-hmm. he's a fine looking man that mike i'll tell you that ah, much very attractive <laughs> all right <laughs> um so they just after the the trip they discussed the boat Five years, 900 a month for five years. They're going to own it outright. They're happy. They kiss. Elizabeth's watching this from across the dock, and uh, she's not happy. Um, We already discussed this is a very bad, like, just confusing financial situation. One minute they're foreclosing, then he gets what seems to be a really, like, menial job, and now they're able to not only not foreclose, but also start spending 900 a month on a boat. Um, I don't think. Not. That's not chump change. Like nine hundred dollars a month is yeah. a lot of money. Right. Yeah. You know what I was thinking as as I was watching it when there was some weird details like this, it made me wonder if because it's based on a real case, they thought that they had to put some things in there, like shoehorn some things in there that really happened, mm. yeah. just because it's like this is that what really happened. Where obviously, if you were crafting a murder like a film noir style fiction, you wouldn't necessarily get into this detail about the sister and the boat and everything yeah. in such a weird way that feels, it just doesn't feel narratively clean, you know? And I, yeah. I wonder if that's the case at this point, if they wanted to show Elizabeth being jealous of Mike and his wife, just they could have take just, a trip. Yeah, she could have, or she could have seen them. She could have been like stalking at their house and see them come home and hug and go inside. I know something like that. But to have them say, "Let's get to this boat," and and actually say a dollar amount, which registers in the audience's head as too much, and just adds another level of confusion. Yeah, it's it's all it's all too much going on right there. Like like you guys are saying, when anytime you do a dollar amount like that, and yeah, it's the that wasn't the trip. The point of the trip down east, which down that's Cape, fighting it. It's it's very confusing. And as I was watching, I'm thinking, I wonder if some of this confusion is coming from them try they're trying to be like true to what happened or some little details that they couldn't let go. Yeah. In the truck, now Nancy's waiting for Mike. Mike has to go to the office or something. She's sitting there, the phone rings, she picks it up. And uh, doesn't say anything and just hears a woman's voice saying, how many times do I have to call you before you answer? And then she hangs up. Um, I don't know how believable um, that is. You know, that wouldn't Nancy respond? I don't know. But anyway, Jimmy sees. I will say as a, as the one person who is a wife here, like yeah. if my husband's phone rang and it's a random number, I am not likely to pick it up like if it's a number i don't recognize i'm not going to pick it up what if you're a little suspicious of him i mean maybe that in that that would be the only case but up until that point she's had no reason to be suspicious well there was the dinner the the going out um during dinner you know for jimmy's yeah, but that's, you go out during yes yeah, a shellfish emergency <laughs> I mean, it's weird right but like there's yeah. no she has she has no real reason to be questioning him. And yes, this number keeps coming up and he's ignoring it. But like, you know, we all get seen these crazy telemarketer calls. These That's days. true. Like, I, I would think, totally answer it. I, I think that it would just be something like, you know, that would just, it, it's just a very straight. So like the fact that she just hangs up and doesn't say anything, I, you know, like I, I think she would have said if, if you did actually pick up, you would say, like, who is this? Right. Maybe don't go down that road of answering it if you're not going to say something, because that just makes it yes, narratively yes. a little, like, that, un. That's the, even me. weirder than her answering is her not responding to that just, statement, you know? But yeah. anyway, Jimmy sees, yeah. Jimmy sees Sammy <laughs> and checks in with him about whether Alfredo is still Sammy's <laughs> drug connection. And... and 
it's like he's stalking him or trailing him all of a sudden for no reason in a storyline that's seemingly pretty unconnected to any murder you know any any uh murder on the cape kind of in things here there's a low level drug dealer walking not doing anything and then the local policeman who usually seems concerned with like maritime matters <laughs> is is cornering him and he's not really mad at him. He just wants an update on his drug dealing. <laughs> just checking in, checking in, Sammy. <laughs> just checking in. You still got the same guy because you know you're not really you know you're not really busy. Is it is it Alfredo? You know I just like to know these things. Now, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, whoever is playing Sammy g- gives his greatest moment right there, where he says, you know, that he wants a straight job, just like Mike got. You know, like that was yeah. well delivered and like. Like oh wow this is this is like heavy heavy uh... it's, it's like uh, Fredo in Godfather Two exactly this is, this is the scene he's wearing that Britney Britney cap yeah, yeah that undermined his acting a little bit but he's like, when Fredo was like I'm smart I could do things yeah, he was like, I, yeah I felt for the guy yeah that was beautiful that was a good moment way good to job, go Sammy. Sammy yeah yeah all nice. right. Elizabeth confronts Mike at the beach. She wants to know why he hasn't answered his, her calls, but they quickly end up in bed together. Uh, as he's about to leave, Elizabeth expresses anger that he went down Cape with, with Nancy and not her. Their, uh, their argument is interrupted by Peter. Oh, oh Peter, you're, Peter. You're playing some audio here, I think. I'm not. Sorry. Oh. Okay, you're, you're going to sing Peter's song or quote it? <laughs> Maybe I can find it while, uh, okay. while we're uh, doing this. But oh, this is this is classic Peter. Tea for my honey, honey for my tea? That is... Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so is was that in the script, guys, or did he improv that? <laughs> uh, I hope it's an improv. Me too. Me yeah. too. For the love of, of of writers who are those kind of writers who do screenplays, I hope that it's. I hope that it was not written. Let's see. Okay, here it is. I've I've found it. Thank you. Honey, with your tea. Life is the flower for which love is the honey. <laughs> Victor Hugo. If you want honey, don't kick over the beehive. It's Dale Carnegie. Mm. Oh, here it is. Do you really want to say emerald instead of green? <laughs> oh, all right, let's stop there. You passed the you you were past that part, but it exemplifies too just how much of a to do there is over this tea. Because he drinks that tea and it's like transcendent to him. It, oh, I it, missed the best moment today. Sorry, Charlie. It, 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 he's holding up the tea bag and he sings tea for my honey, honey for me. Well, anyway, um, Peter, what is going on? So Peter loves her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just and he's just this hor- but he's just this horrible character and horrible human being, though, right? Well, it's not I mean, horrible. Not horrible. <laughs> Don't be so mean to Peter. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a, he's like written as such a like cliche. He's this very like snooty. Pushover. Um, you know, like writer type, you know, like bookish and, but it's like in every, in like most snooty waspy way. And um, like he, he's comes off as sort of like one of those, um, like he's a professor or something, but not really. Like, it, like yeah. it's kind of uh, uh, performative. He's got a he's got some sort of fatal flaw. You like he never like he he implies that he never really uh, stuck his neck out to try to get published or something. You know, like that's why he kind of uh, reveres um, Elizabeth. It seems, but what uh, I mean with the hypothermia and and the fact that he just be basically becomes like a nanny, you know, to Elizabeth by the end where, you know, he's like, you know, I had to read the boy six books, you know, like trying to guilt trip her or whatever. Like what, just what, what a trajectory and what a, what a sad, pathetic character. I, I, I love <laughs> he's him. very, he's very, he's very the- theatrical, yeah. you know? So you've yeah. got this scene with Mike pretty stoic and, you know, uh, Elizabeth is, is a, is a normal actress and he's coming in here prancing around, and it's just like it throws the world off, you know. And it, I don't know how much I even buy that he really like 
has a crush on her or you know it it's weird but and and he's dressed in such a cliche way that he almost looks like he's playing a a writery type guy for halloween you know that kind of thing yeah yeah it's like i think that's what it is it's like because it's supposed to be this writer type but then it's it's so like it's so over the top and it's like all every cliche you would expect and it's all thrown together but not but then it's not like well done or well established. Like it would be one thing if you, you know, like the the idea is that that he and and Elizabeth have connected over their writing. But the the reality is that they actually spend very little time showing that part of Elizabeth, and so you mm-hmm. have you're constantly having to be reminded that she's a writer, and then. When, like, the scene, Farley cut off the, he was, like, making a suggestion, but then they have that entire, that entire conversation of over Emerald versus Viridian, which yeah. was, like, mm. super hilarious, because she was talking about Emerald trim on some item of clothing, and he recommended she use the word Viridian, and it's, I find, I think I found it hilarious, because I have, I have only ever seen the I have seen the the word Viridian used in books, but it's usually romance novels. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like, you know, and I was like, I've also seen the word emerald used, and it's usually was like we're usually talking about someone's eyes, right? They're Viridian eyes, they're emerald eyes. They're just so it's such overwrought language that it's it's just bad. Yeah. yeah. So what's uh the, the Again, whose side is the movie on? Like, obviously, they're showing Elizabeth, like, playfully um, deal with this situation where she enjoys having Mike locked up in the room upstairs and afraid to come down, and she's yeah. sort of toying with him, but it definitely it doesn't make her seem, like, bad or, 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 or anything, but... Um, the movie doesn't know, and and she <laughs> yeah, yeah she, that's she, what it she, comes she, down really, to. Really, yeah. and she seems to change throughout the thing. At first, she seems to kind of want to stick it to him by making him wait up there and then later she's kind of like uh, almost it seems like she feels bad for having made him stand up there and she's sick of having peter around at the same time too yeah. so <laughs> all that happens in that one scene but ultimately yeah i don't think i don't think the movie really knows whose side it's on you so, know yeah so mike's upstairs through that whole thing and finally peter leaves um and then um that um, so meanwhile, meanwhile Jimmy is out there on the beach trying to see where Mike is, cause um, cause Sammy has uh, clued him in that there might be something going on between Mike and Elizabeth. Um, after Peter leaves, Mike expresses his anger that um, it took so long. And Elizabeth says, "You could have just come down." Peter knows about the affair, and uh, Mike's not too happy about that. I don't know if he does. Do you guys think he does or no? I don't but, think he does until no. he sees Mike walk out. Exiting, right. So she's playing games with him a little bit there by uh, with Mike by saying that Peter knows when Peter doesn't know. I believed I believed her and I still but, believe but, her. I think but, but Peter's reaction when you No, know, well, I think Peter I think Peter's mad mad to realize that Mike was up there the whole time, but he knew oh, that they were having an affair. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if anybody knows. That, that could be the case. It's just it's one yeah. of those things. But it's again one of those. It these are these like little character details, where you you just you're not. It's it's very why why Farley you keep asking like who yeah. side is this movie on? It's very hard to say because they they, they don't are, know. They're they're like they're like putting all these things in place and you just don't know how they feel about certain characters. The only character you know they actually like is Mike. Like, he is very clearly our hero of the story. Um, but that, that's what I love. I love when everything is just off. Just a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like no, it's, it's, confusing. it's not totally bonkers. It's just a little bit off, and you're just like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. What, like, what are the implications of this little thing that just happened that suddenly, you know, like – change everything in my brain it's it's really fun uh jimmy confronts mike about the affair mike says he's gonna end it mike gets home the house is empty he takes off his shirt and washes his face in the sink yeah charlie you love a good face washing huh yeah the great cliche washing away his sins 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Nancy's at the bar. Oh, yeah. Carlos is pumped to see her out without Mike. Oh, he's loving it. But then Mike shows up. The kids are at her, her mom's house, we learn. Um, there's some illegal drugs being put into a bag. Nancy says, don't touch me before uh, walking by Mike and playing pool with Carlos, who's very handsy. Um, She periodically gives Mike a little death stare as she's playing pool. Sammy proposes to Mike that he help him deal some drugs on the East End. Mike doesn't even want to hear it. (laughs) (laughs) And he reveals to Mike that he ratted him out, too. (laughs) <laughs> he's like thanks a lot sammy you know you, you, you expect nothing uh yeah. nothing less but i got an idea to hear the straight laced guy do you want to come in on a on a being a <laughs> drug dealer with me Let's, what do you think now now nancy is immediately sick of carlos pawing uh, at her uh so mike punches carlos who comes up with a knife sammy yeah. yes uh tom so uh, sammy said he ratted him out there right like he's, he told uh, the wife about the affair. That's, no, Elizabeth. He told Elizabeth about the wife. Wasn't that he one? Told, no, he told Jimmy. He told, he told Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy about it, and it, it got around. Okay. So he didn't He didn't tell anybody else, though. Just Jimmy. Okay. I thought he was, he was, I thought he was apologizing for telling Elizabeth about the wife. <laughs> it's none of our faults that we don't know. It's the movie's fault that a lot of different ways. <laughs> but maybe it was about Jimmy. But at the same, but all of it was like, whatever. Clearly, <laughs> Sammy was out telling anyone. I mean, dude, why would you have a drug dealer be your best friend and be able to figure out all yeah. this stuff immediately about you? And he's like completely unreliable. So, yeah. like, why would you trust him? I there's do not a- buy this friendship between Mike and Sammy. You're, you're, there's no, exactly. no yeah. reason why they're friends. And like, why does Sammy go to Mike's at the at the end of the movie again? Like, yeah. it just doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. Guilt trip idea. Oh yeah, that bar. <laughs> that would be great. If you guys want to go for some like a cup of chowder or something one day? I'm in. That's a great idea. Imagine oh, that. Wow. Imagine if the pool table is just as just as I want it to be, and everything's Pilgrimage. just right. Oh. Maybe Roxy's there. Maybe Roxy works yeah. there. Yeah, I liked Roxy. Oh, um, Sammy. Sammy's the voice of reason when Carlos pulls out the knife, and he can he convinces uh, Carlos to leave. Sammy has these brief moments where you're like, "Hey, like I can actually relate to this character for a second. Um, that, that knife was so much. It was all of a sudden. It's like a Van Damme movie, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when I was like, okay, so now we know who the killer is. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even multiple times watching it didn't dawn on me. I'm an idiot. Okay, it's like a local. It's like a local small town where you know everybody. It's not like the big city. So it's like, hey, Mike, hey, Carlos, we know each other for years. How about I stab you? Yeah, it's I like, know. Yeah, <laughs> I'll kill you right now over this minor yeah. transgression. That night in bed, uh, this is a great moment for Nancy. I love this moment. Nancy's in bed. She's got some difficult questions for Mike. Do you love me? Are you cheating on me? And um, he kind of blows her off and says, just go to sleep. And and then she says, she'll kill him if he cheats. And then she says, I wouldn't kill you. I'd just leave you for a fisherman with a boat, a real man, because you're not a real man. You know what you are? You're a clam cop. Yeah. Yes. He deserves that. This was a great moment. That was a great moment. It was so ridiculous. (laughs) And it was like... I, one of the things that is fascinating about this movie is is this sort of deification of the fisherman, like <laughs> as this like manly, like like this whole <laughs> everything that happens in this movie is like it's all about Mike and how he feels emasculated because he cannot be a fisherman, and so then he has this affair because that makes him feel manly, right? Like this this is what is the underlying plot. Yeah, you're right. That, yeah officially this is supposed to be a rip from the headlines true <laughs> story of this murder that ha- that that like electrified a small town on the cape and like the more interesting story would be that um what happened after the murder in real life when people thought that the mike character killed her right 
Right. That that's where all the you know the real interesting stuff. The real interesting story begins right when this movie ends. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what Tom and I had. We had a like conversation about it yesterday when we finished watching. We're like, how it was like all this build up and then it yeah. ended. <laughs> yeah, they let him come onto the crime, go to the crime scene and poke around and then pick up a baby and leave. And they're the, like, later, Mike. The end. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. Wow. Maybe it's just part of a, a trilogy. Maybe we're working our way towards the rest of it. Um, but that's a great moment because um, Nancy is absolutely right. You know, Mike is not a real man. He is a clam cop. And um and he deserves to be um have that pointed out to him like I I love that that's a great uh redemption for for the Nancy character who you want you want to like her you want to but just the way the the odd intonations make it yeah. so so yeah. difficult also, it's hard to like <laughs> I will say this the Nancy character reminded me of this girl I knew in high school she was a really nice girl I didn't, I had nothing against her but every time I would look at this character, I was like, that's Charlotte Diaz, not Nancy, mm -hmm. whatever her name is, Nancy Luna. Mm -hmm. we, we've I all known a Nancy Luna in our lives, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter is enjoying dinner at Elizabeth's. She needs to run off to vomit. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Uh, How, what a, every, I know, I'm, every time, like, uh, writers are like, oh, how are we going to convey that she's pregnant? I know. Let's have her vomit. Like, it's every in every movie. Anyway. And yeah. also... Also, can I just say that yes. not every woman vomits with pregnancy? Yes. Because I never did. I, got, I did get nausea, but I never got... Not, I never yeah. grew up. It is such lazy writing. And it's not just for a little production like Murder on the Cape. It's every movie. Like, ugh. Yeah. And while we're at it, too much vomit in cinema, period. You know? Like, yeah. Why? Who wants to watch anyone vomiting? And I feel like I see it in every other movie I watch. It's crazy. It's like a student film thing, but some people stick with it and through their professional careers. Yeah. And I wish they had. Yeah, they just think that they're it. being gritty and uncompromising, but they're just uh, being unpleasant. Anyway. That movie we saw in Providence, Puking Zombies. Yeah, yeah we, yeah. we saw that in Boston, but yeah. Yeah. All right. That means nothing. I just wanted to remember it. No, no. I, you know, I've, that's the the puking that bothered me the least in the history of movies because I mean we knew we were getting into it, Charlie. As you're as you're working through here, Farley, are you gonna get to where Elizabeth and Mike are talking out on the out on the deck? Yeah, we're gonna listen to it for two minutes and eighteen oh, seconds. Oh, yeah. okay, that's good stuff. And th this this is another one that made me think, man, what are I don't know if this is what Mike is really thinking, or if it's just what he's saying. It's so confusing. I don't. I don't know if he means what he's saying. But this is a good. This is a very melodramatic moment. But first, I want to point out that after the vomit, the next shot is Peter reading literature to Elizabeth as she falls asleep. Yes. <laughs> uh, like, oh, poor little pathetic Peter. Oh. Fish on a bed of kale with he's like getting into which wines. It, it's so much. It's, a book. it's not even literature. It's oh, <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Wow. No, I didn't... I, it is literature, but I, I, you know, it's not like something that would be a peaceful thing to fall asleep to. <laughs> not like me, anyway. My well, and the way he his we have to talk about how he's like reading, but it's also he's also performing while reading, and she's mm. allegedly falling asleep to this. Like it's just like yeah. no, he's a he 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 does not have a future career in audiobooks. Let's just say yeah. that. <laughs> and who I mean, who can feel safe falling asleep with that maniac right next to you? You know? Yeah, yeah. Mike, although he seems pretty harmless, though, too. You know, what's he going to do? Anyway, Mike walks the beach. We get we check in with a disappointing, disapproving lady uh, next door. Just moral compass. Moral compass. Uh, he sees Elizabeth. He hasn't. She hasn't heard from him in a week. And let's hear what they talk about. I get it. I get the picture. Let me guess. It's not me. It's you. Look, I just think our situation is impossible. Why? What are you going to do? You're going to take me to New York City? Parade me around to all your friends? Your fisherman woodcutter trophy? Look, they just laugh at me. This has been great, really. 
I just, I can't do this anymore. You know why this is impossible? Because you never were gonna leave your wife. You have to understand something. I live here. I always have, and I always will. So what? This was just easy sex for you, right? I get it. It was fun. And that was fine. But things change. Yeah, look, I know things have changed for me too. And I, I just can't. I'm pregnant. <laughs> what? You're pregnant? Is it mine? Are you kidding? Well, there's always that guy Peter that's hanging around here. No, Mike. <laughs> Come on, Sorry. Mike. You don't think it's Peter's baby. <laughs> But yeah, Charlie. Uh, Charlie was doing. There's, uh, there's more I want to play. But one, the things uh, change. Is that in, in the room that they say that a lot too? Just like, anytime it, someone wants to write vaguely, that yeah. that phrase seems to come in there. Just like things change. Like yeah, that explains it all. You know what I mean? When Mike says it's impossible, this is hilarious because I mean, he makes sense when he says I live here. Like, I have a wife and family. That's why it's impossible. Not because if you go to New York, they're going to laugh at you parade because me around. you don't know literature. <laughs> yeah. He actually, but the way he says it, it almost seems like it's not going to work because they'll laugh at me in New York. He's a very, yeah, he, I mean, he has no that's, confidence. That's what's weird. It's like, in this scene, he... He, what he, you think that what he would be saying is, <laughs> I have this marriage, I have these children, I've commit, you know, this is who I've committed to. Um, but instead, it's more like he's like, no, no, I, I do love you. I would go with you, but I would never fit into your life. And I, you know, and you just be, end up becoming like ashamed of me. And it, so it's like a very bizarre, like what? Is he breaking up? Like, what? Is, what is actually happening here? Yeah, yeah so they contradictory. Cut out that first yeah. part, the woodcutter, woodcutter, uh, fisherman trophy. Yeah. He's he doesn't want to be the trophy husband. Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my woodcutter fisherman trophy. Oh, uh, isn't this movie great though? I mean, e every scene gives you so much to think about. It's it's really uh, gripping. All right. I was picturing Tommy was so to come in like. You know what they say, love is blind. Yes, that's exactly the Chocolate type of thing. Chocolate is the symbol of love. <laughs> you can just, just toss in these lines anywhere, and they don't mean anything. Yes. But it doesn't matter. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Let's hear a little more. I haven't had sex with anyone but you in the last six months. What are you going to do? I'm keeping it. Of course you are. Mike, of course I'm going to keep it. Of course you're going to keep it, of course. I told you, I, I want a family more than anything. And I thought it was impossible, but I'm pregnant. And look, I'm sorry that it's with you, trust me. I'd rather it be with anybody else, but without you, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you. <laughs> it's like immediate contradiction, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'd, so, I'd rather it be with anybody else, but without you, it wouldn't be possible. So thank you. Oh, yep. that's good is stuff. It, the thing with when characters say things like that is, are are they lying to us or are they lying to themselves? Right. Yeah. That's, is she, does she mean that? No, she's lying to. She know she loves him because she's yeah. gonna admit to it in a little while. So I guess. But it almost seems like not though. It almost seems like at that point. She meant she really wishes it were with someone Or the else. filmmakers just were got swept Don't up know. in the drama. They just got swept up in the drama, and they didn't think, like, how does this relate to any of the other scenes? Yeah. <laughs> All right, great scene. And now we're going to skip ahead. Tom, did you have a point or no? Um, <laughs> and then she, she tells him, you can go now. Like, very memely, right, kind of? Yes. And then it's like everything has changed where he's like, wait, maybe I want to stay with this and raise this baby now. It's like it, in that three minutes, there's so much back and forth and changing and it makes no sense. It's real good, though. It's really, it's really real good. good. Yeah, it really keeps good. you on your toes. I love this movie. Peter and Elizabeth. Okay, two years later. Two years later, Elizabeth 
Uh, presume, I guess we're going to learn that Elizabeth was gone for a while, it seems. But she's back. And Pe oh, Peter, pathetic, pathetic Peter, doting over the baby on the beach with Elizabeth, just doing whatever whatever he can for this woman. What is what is his job? You know, <laughs> what is going on with his life? He just sits at home and waits to to dote on her. I guess. Anyway, Mike and Nancy go to the local market. Mike displays his apple juggling for Nancy. Did you guys notice that? Yeah, that was impressive. That was fun. That was the the most tender moment between Mike and Nancy in the I, whole movie. This is like this this one scene is the best. <laughs> The, this is the best their relationship has ever been. <laughs> yeah. 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 She this said, is what should have started. <laughs> milk and eggs. And then he, he's like, aye, aye. I'm going to go get yeah, those milk exactly. and eggs. Exactly. She goes for the milk and eggs. He goes for the milk and eggs. And there's Elizabeth. In a, there's so many moments in the movie where like a character just is suddenly there, sort of. You know what I mean? Like how Jimmy and, just... It, it is often Elizabeth who just like appears out of nowhere. Yeah, like at the beach with the, the hypothermia scene. She's just like there like, now. And I, I is love it because that. of weird staging by the filmmakers or is it because she was sort of stalking him? That's the funny thing in a situation where someone yeah. could potentially be stalking. Yeah, it's and, weird I staging. Think it's like, I think it's more, uh, it's more because of the weird staging but it, but it's kind of nice that it does play into that idea that she's kind of stalking, and kind of, you know, like that. Yeah. That that's what adds to that sort of like maybe they that you know like this film isn't really taking her, ma like making her to be the pure victim here. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay, so she she pops in and says she's in town for a visit, and she has something she wants to show him. Like, oh, what could it be? You know, like. Has Mike just forgotten that she was pregnant? You know, anyway, uh, he says he'll stop by later. And then this is the worst. When So then Mike's back with Nancy, and now Elizabeth walks by, and then Coy, like, I guess she thinks she's being coy, and it seems that it's actually effective, too. Uh, yeah. When she walks by and thanks Mike, well, let's hear it. Mr. Luna. Hello. I, um... I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Luna. I'm going to look into that. Yeah, sure. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is that? Christ, I don't know. No. I should have taken it off my jacket before I came in here. People think I work 24-7. Yeah, this isn't who I am. <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of the lift where they're talking about elevator repairmen so much or or the phone repairman in in bells also known as murder by phone where it's like it's so intense about the shellfish warden and the demands on his time <laughs> so people leave me alone <laughs> not I am. and it's just <laughs> These jackets, these green jackets that do not, I, I don't know. I don't think green is a very common uniform color for cops. Like, usually they're the men in blue. Yeah. So so I think that that's the other thing that makes these these windbreakers stand out so much to me is that they're these, this green color. So he's, like, wearing it. And then he's, like, he's just so desperate to get it off of him. It was just so, it's such a funny moment. Like, and it's not supposed to be funny because he's supposed to be panicked, right? Like, oh, my God, my mistress and my wife are in the same room. And, you and, know, like, like Nan again, Nancy, Nancy picks up the phone and and hears the voice and just hangs up and, and doesn't dwell on it. And like in this scene in the market, like just one fault, like Nancy, like, what did you help her with? Or like, you know, like because. Elizabeth just walks, walks by and says, like, thank you. I will look into that. And it's like, it's so, and Nancy even is like, ooh, what's this? You know, like, is this girl flirting with you almost? But, like, maybe Nancy doesn't want to know, though, too. I guess the if if there's any explanation for it. And she does when she's talking to Roxy. Is it Roxy that she confides in? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She does let on that she, you know, she doesn't want to be um, overthinking things. But, um. It's just yeah. so un it's just so later, uncomfortable. So surprised later, you know, like right. <laughs> I can't wait for that scene. She's very uneven. Nancy is so uneven. Yeah, 
I yeah. like her though. I, I mean, we're gonna get even more uneven coming coming up. <laughs> I love <her. laughs> Mike. Mike is a great father. I can't wait for that. Okay, let's get there. Mike comes to visit Elizabeth. <laughs> Peter opens the, opens the door and says she's resting, and it's not a good time. Uh, as Mike leaves, it turns out Elizabeth is in the yard. You know, oh, Peter's. That's so sn- snivelly. Is that the word? There's so much to think about there. Did did was she really resting? Did she look out the window and see Mike and then come down? Yeah. You know, no, it's like she comes. Like she came from behind. From or the from the opposite door. side. Yeah. She it it was bizarre because it she comes so he's there on the back deck. He comes he always comes in and out of the back deck door, not her front door. Yeah. Um so they're on the back deck, he's not on the that's where Peter is like talking to him. And then he's leaving and she comes around from the front, which is where her driveway is. So I assumed that she had been out running errands while Peter was watching the kid. And that's why he was in the house. So the fact that, like, instead of just saying, like, a normal person, which would be, oh, she's out running errands, why did he lie? It's a power play. It's a power play by Peter. Like, it's the only power he has is is that he can somehow control the access to Elizabeth just a little bit, you know, and, and so he's going to cling to that. But Charlie has a point. It could be that Elizabeth was resting. She quickly ran out the front door to bump into Mike. I mean, it could be, but like, I, it didn't feel that way. Cause I feel like she was holding a bag. Wasn't she holding a bag? Well, it, but, but so, so Peter was lying. He, instead of, he doesn't say she's out. He says she's, she's resting. resting. Yeah. It's not a good time. So he was, cause he could have gotten, Peter could have gotten this, you know, if he wants the power play, but he could have gotten pretty much the same result by saying, she's not home. Goodbye, Mike. And close the door. You he, know, he wanted the power of, 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 of being able to <laughs> deceive him. Seriously. I, yeah, that wanted to imply that they had a more intimate relationship, right? Because that's what the implication has good call. Yeah, always been, that he yeah. wants to have an intimate relationship, and now that she has this child that he is helping her, seemingly helping her yeah. take care of, yeah. like, like it's like, oh, now he's finally, you know gotten into her bed but i actually don't think that that ever happens oh no no oh, way no, no, she no, has no, no interest no. in yeah no way so i guess maybe maybe she was upstairs and then she peeked out the window and saw that they it probably would have been actually better filmmaking to show a shot of her peek out the window get excited and see oh it's mike and you but know, it's also very having... possible that she was never in the house I think it's more likely she wasn't in the house. She just came home. Yeah, yeah. Parked her I think car. That that's the more likely thing. Okay. Over the over her coming because at this I don't understand why she would come around the front instead of just come out the back way. Yeah. And, you know, like like especially since that seems to be the door that most people use to get in and out of the her house. Mm-hmm. generally is the back door not the front door yeah so like, what if she thought he was gonna leave and she had to catch him before yeah he yeah, away, yeah that's so. very i i mean and i hear i hear both of you <laughs> and I, i've thought about this a lot like while i was watching it and um and after um and i don't think there's a clear i'm i neither one of you are right um Charlie. When we're promoting this, can we say the most in-depth Murder on the Cape <laughs> podcast ever produced? <laughs> can we? Oh, yeah, of course. Tom, what do you think? Was she in the house, like Peter said, or was she just coming home as Mike was uh, walking around? I-, I did not think she was in the house when okay. I was watching. Yeah, it's more likely she wasn't in the house, but it's very. it is still distinctly possible and i thought of it too charlie it wasn't just you bringing it up that crossed my mind i think what's in her hands is the key and i'd have to go back and watch what type of bag she's carrying (laughs) you know all right so anyways um so what happens here um they talk okay as mike leaves he sees elizabeth in the yard they talk while peter takes baby henry down to the beach (laughs) Peter, <laughs> Peter, take the baby to the beach. I gotta talk to Mike. Uh, she comes on to him, but he pushes her away. She explains that her dad died and left her the house. She might stay. He asks her not to come down to his work. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's gonna happen real soon? Elizabeth asks Peter to watch Henry while she goes out 
Peter is in my notes. <laughs> Peter's such a wimpy dope. Anyway, <laughs> she, she drives by Mike's house and sees him playing with his kids. Because, look, Mike may be a lot of things, ladies and gentlemen, but he is a gosh darn great dad. <laughs> you play a lot of, like, tag in the yard. <laughs> That's true. You're playing. You're playing. All right, action. What are we doing exactly? You're playing. You're just chasing each other. You're playing. I feel like this was all shot in one long scene, and then we got just different Interspersed, yeah. <laughs> Interspersed, because I feel like, He's always wearing the same coat, so <laughs> that's yeah. a, we got to look that check if the kids were in the same outfit in the first tag game as the one two years later, you know? Yeah, <laughs> same New York knit cap. <laughs> All right, Peter's waiting at the dinner table for Elizabeth, who comes home late. He explains that Henry made him read six books before bedtime, and uh, so that's so Henry. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> But it's so Peter to play this guilt trip, you know, like, oh, I was hoping that we'd have dinner together. But uh, like he's just been sitting in front of this like uh, empty plate for hours, it seems. Yeah. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And let's I mean, let's so let's consider the timeline. So she left (laughs) this. This child is only about. One and a half, yeah, eighteen months. Like barely. The kid is not asking for books. He's not asking for more books. Mm. Or any books. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> Peter's reading into the kids' um, you know, um, movements and whatnot. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Peter just wants to feel more important. Yeah, immediate. he he embellishes a lot of things. Um, okay. Next morning, uh, Elizabeth goes to Mike's work to get medical insurance paperwork for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> the, the clerk, oh, I love it. Uh, the clerk, uh, second favorite scene. <laughs> the clerk gives her the paperwork. Uh, okay, th- wait, there's wait, a wait. lot. There's a lot <laughs> discussion involved. Tom, you start. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say the financial situation of the people in this movie are all over the place. She's an independently wealthy writer with her own house on the beach to now she has no insurance and she's like <laughs> needs to glom onto Mike. It's just all over the place. Like they I don't know. But and with is- that, Tom, I was thinking, is she doing it just to get a dig at him and his right. family? Yeah, yeah. Because the mo- there's this underlying, but she could also be doing it for the money too. There's this yeah. potential underlying theme that the makers of the movie blame everything on her you know you know and it's odd that that would be their stance because she's brutally murdered uh arbitrarily at, at the end you know and like yeah. it's, it's just it's just it's a weird position that they seem to be taking but what about like the what type of form is she gonna need ava yeah. that this <laughs> conversation was like awesome this is just play. what time I, are you playing this clip because i'm it, not playing the clip i'm sorry it's just, it was just like she she would ask a question and then finally the, the the woman behind the counter who has to be said this is the first time we actually have her speak but in a previous scene there is a shot and she is standing outside the window so you see this woman outside the window yeah but never seen her before and there's no context for her standing right there so you're like so Tom was like, oh, because he thought it was someone from the crew who was like accidentally in the background. Yeah, I it's thought it foreshadowing. was foreshadowing. It's, it's some foreshadowing like, oh, th- this woman is going to come back in a big way to hand over some paperwork. And it's going like, to add some red tape and, to this. And it's just the way that conversation just unfolds because like it was like she keeps like she's like well do you is he a this kind of employee or this kind of employee or whatever and then it's like none of those answers mattered she's like thank you here here's all these papers and elizabeth elizabeth is so annoyed in in the same way that mike's annoyed that's why they're perfect for each other you know mike's so annoyed us to feel there farley (laughs) does it want us to think this small town clerk is such a ditz and or, or 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 and or is mean or are we supposed to think that, you know, does Elizabeth think, like, why didn't you just give the papers to me and not talk so much? Yeah, who's, yeah. Are we, who's, uh, like, we never know clerk, what side they're on. 
Yeah, ultimately the clerk was pretty darn good in the the clerk situation. Was right. it's, yeah, she didn't get any solid answers and gave over a bunch of paperwork in a fairly timely manner. I mean, there was some questions, but when Elizabeth rolls her eyes, me as the audience member thinks, well, what are you rolling your eyes about? It makes yeah. me like Elizabeth a lot less, you know? And and I do I like her most even even when she's stalking him. I'm I, you yes. know, it's yes, easier I to like side it. with her than it is to side with Mike, I think, you know? Yes. Uh, but the movie seems to be siding with Mike, I think. I don't know. It can be interpreted so many ways. Um, so um, what's, uh, she sees Mike in the parking lot and gives him the paper paperwork and complains about um, how she doesn't have insurance because she lost her job and she's not poor enough for one type of thing, but she's too rich for another type of thing and blah, blah, blah. Um, then Jimmy appears after uh, Elizabeth leaves again, again, with just characters appearing. I love, I love it. Um, uh, and he tells Mike to tell Nancy, go home, tell your wife what you did. Isn't Jimmy great, by the way? He's the best. He's like the Greek chorus. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He really is. And he's like the only one who is. He is like so cool. He's such a cool cucumber. He's <laughs> calm. He's collected. He has. He casts no judgment. Like he's not like, dude, stop cheating on your wife. He's like, you did this thing. You gotta tell her. Yeah. And when he's doing it, he's just like, watch your back. People he, are not talking. You know, like mm-hmm. he's always like, and he does, but he doesn't like. You know, it's. It, it, I don't know. I I really like the Jimmy character. Oh yeah. <laughs> Love yeah. Jimmy. He's very authentic. He feels like he's from there. You know, like the the yeah. accent is oh. um is is right on spot. Uh, anyway, so after church, it seems they were at church. Is that where they're coming out of there? Yeah. Um, and the kids go to run in the sand, and Mike's yeah. Mike's got to explain the whole situation to Nancy. What what better place than than there? Um, and let's let's listen to uh, how that goes. I had an affair. It was three years ago. I, I never meant for this to happen. It, it, it's over. You what? You had an affair? There's more. She got pregnant. There's a little boy. You're kidding me, right? His name's Henry. Do other people know? Yeah, look, Nancy, I'm sorry. How could you do this to me? How could you do this to us? I don't know what I was thinking. You know, you told me you were working. You weren't working. You were playing. Yeah! (laughs) You weren't working? You were playing. Oh, isn't that great? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So previously she had a whole conversation with her friend about at the pool table she, scene yeah yeah how she was worried that her husband was cheating on her how is this such a huge shock right like she, yeah it, she's been de- deluding herself you just don't react that way you don't you you like if you, you like you wouldn't say what how could you you'd say like I knew it. I you blah blah blah. You know, like that's what right. you would say. Yeah. And how about Mike? He's like, I didn't mean for this to happen. Like he was just complete. He had nothing to do with it. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's it's the really worst. Over twenty times <laughs> happening. Yeah. It's uh, one of the this scene. There's a couple others where it does feel like there were reshoots or it was from another time, like a few months of of a part in, in, in the shooting and or the editing or it, said it they just read it doesn't it. flow. They said they spent two years uh, filming. Mm. Oh, Interesting. okay. Yeah. yeah. Good for them. Um, so you might be right. Yeah. I love, I just love the drama of you weren't working. You were playing, you know, like that's, it's so such an yeah. obvious di- direction to go in, you know. It's uh, yeah, you could quote it before it happens. Yes, and um, and cheer Which on. Which is nice. Okay, so um, they drop off their kids at her mom's house. I like that a, l- a nice little touch as they're dropping off the kids. 
What do you do this time? What do you do now? That's so Mount Mass. <laughs> That's yeah. good stuff. Yes. He brings her home. Then she tells him to find someplace else to sleep. She throws his clothes at the truck. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Is she selectively choosing clothes there? That he's like going to need. He's gonna it need feels, in yeah. the near future? It really felt that way. Like She's like, you're probably going to need this. Like a spare green jacket, <laughs> some pajamas or something. Because she's very not throwing thoughtful. everything out. It's no. very she, thoughtful. She's not no. throwing his like sports <laughs> stuff out or the TV or anything. She's just like, yeah. here's some clothes. Nothing's getting broken. Nothing's getting broken. I never want to see you again. You're not coming back here, except I'm going to like kind of forgive you tomorrow. Yeah, because <laughs> this this will hold you over till tomorrow <laughs> when this is uh, this blows over. All right, next. See, oh, this is real good here, folks. Uh, Nancy goes <laughs> to confront Elizabeth. Ooh, showdown. Hello? Are you Elizabeth? Yes. Do you know who I am? I do. Well, then I'll just make this really easy. Did you have an affair with my husband? Yes. Can I see him? The child? I, I, I don't think we're going to be staying for that long. Well, Elizabeth. I don't really think that's how it works. How what works? Parental rights. You know, Mike might not be the perfect husband, but he's a wonderful father. And so I forgive him. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Remember him. That is <laughs> how you thought that was going. <laughs> Uh, wow. Well, I don't know what to say. Any, so, I like any, when she says, I, can I see the child? We're not going to be staying that long. That's like, not that, as, that, yeah. That's, that long, that the kid's in the that's house. That's not, that's not the right, right response. Is the child here right now? Are you, are you <laughs> right now? I'll give it the only thing I could say is that Elizabeth doesn't want this crazy woman near her child, and so she's just making up like, this excuse because she doesn't want to say to her face i don't want you near my child so. i know but they could have worded it like hey listen you know we're gonna do our own thing you know something like that we'll, yeah we you know but but no i mean it definitely is incongruous is it incongruous yeah makes, yeah. Yeah. yeah which i mean I, I don't know did you guys read about the actual story yeah the actual story A little bit. Yeah, because like the in the in the like the real story is that actually the 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 Mike and Nancy characters do have a relationship with both uh, the Elizabeth character and the child. Right. Like, so so like, this is true. This is another time that they're hitting like a plot point, but they they take something that happened in re real life and and manage to make it seem um, completely uh, fictional. <laughs> and I was confused when she says parental rights. I love that. She's when like, she's the, that's like the, the trump card that she's pulling out. Uh, it's perhaps like perhaps you know a little something called parental <laughs> rights. Like oh, and then it makes it just makes me think. Oh yeah. And, well, does that apply to her? I mean, and, like right now, like maybe in the future when Mike wants to see the kid, but yeah, right. does she have rights? And then it makes me think about the legality of it rather than the drama and the narrative of what's going on right yeah. there. But it's the way that someone will throw something out that they don't really know about. Like the way people will say, like, I have a freedom of speech or this is a free country. But yeah, Ava, you were going to say? Yes, exactly. Did you have something, Ava, or are you good? Oh, I was just going to say, like, it, to me, it's just, it's just it, it comes off as really bizarre in that moment, too, because she's only, she's never, still never seen this kid. She only just found out about the kid's existence. And then, like, she wants to see the kid, and then she's talking about parental rights. Like, like it's almost like she's threatening, like, to sue, they're going to sue for custody, except that she still actually technically has not even spoken to Mike to forgive him. So... Yeah. Because next thing we know, he's still sleeping in his car. Yep. Oh. She's sticking up for his rights, though. Oh, there's so much. Well, I love this movie. It's really good. Really good. Um, all right. More drama on the back porch. Um, Peter, Peter opens up to Elizabeth, finally. Wasn't that just charming? 
Not now, Peter. It's what you wanted, isn't it? Were you spying on me? <laughs> Why don't you let me in like that? I could love Henry just as much as he and I would let you live your life. Live my life? What? With you? Is that what you want? I don't want a life with you. You're still in love with him and you can't stand the fact that he loves his wife. You want the things that you can't have. I wish it were me. What, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to cry for you now, really? No. Jeez. I am as big a man as Mike Luna. Strength isn't what you don't do, not what you do. Get, we, we lost your minds? Get off me! Jesus! Oh, good scene. Wow. <laughs> I like what Peter says. Why don't you let me in like that? Yeah, I know. Using I'm... the pronoun, which has to refer to the thing that just happened, which is a fight between the, the wife and the mistress. Yes, I know, because clearly that's part. what they're discussing. And yeah, there's. Why don't you let me in like that? You want to be in like that? There must have been a line where she said something about Mike, and then he, you know, but they cut it or lost it or something. But yeah, that's so great. confusing. Just wants to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I like and when he says, I'm a... me. I don't know. He's always just there. So. Yeah. The, like yeah. the it goes up to like um dynasty like the TV show dynasty level of uh, drama there you know and like again Elizabeth is suddenly like this bad girl you know the way she's acting and she's like uh, a little extra mean to Peter in a way that um I don't buy you know it's weird yeah. all right good scene old lady next door uh looks on disapprovingly. <laughs> Once again. She's like, man, of all the houses on the cave here <laughs> on the beach, I got to live next to these crazy folks. <laughs> At the docks, Carlos gives a bag of drugs to Sammy, explaining it's very valuable. Elizabeth and baby Henry drive to the docks. Sammy talks to her a bit about how he's got a kid in Hartford. Um, he gets a ride from Elizabeth uh, to, to go f see if they can find where Mike is. Uh, Mike catches a guy with a bucket of clams and no license, and, oh, he unleashes on the guy. Unleashes. Let's all of his rage out. That's stealing, all right? This is my job. That's stealing. Dump him out. That's a great a great moment. Mike gets to let out his rage. Um, then Elizabeth shows up there and apologizes to him. She says she's still in love with him, and she's going to have to – she's going to leave because he doesn't want her. He hugs her, and she leaves. Then it turns out Sammy left the bag in Elizabeth's car. So um, that's going to be an issue. Sammy and Carlos are going to have to get that. Charlie. The timing there is really funny because they, they almost want to have it be like with Mike and Elizabeth, like the, the off into the sunset moment where she's like, I'm leaving now. If she were stepping on a plane or something, okay. But it's sort of like no, in the near home. future. Yeah. I'm leaving now. <laughs> you know, it's funny. And right before that, that's a lot of convoluted, like, rigmarole between, hey, where are you going? You looking for Mike? Yeah, I guess I'm like, I could show you where he, where he is. Do you want a ride? I could use a ride. You going that way? Yeah, hop in. <laughs> Just to get him in that car. Right. It's like, I know. It's really shoehorned in there and ridiculous. And it's also 30 seconds after he got this, like, knapsack, which is told <laughs> is worth his, you know, <laughs> A fortune, <laughs> and he just like hops in. I mean, we know. I know he's stupid. It's but... shoehorned in. It's very yeah. Yeah. What do you call it, Charlie? Uh, ham fisted. Ham -fisted. Yeah. yeah. Like, how do we get this, the the drugs into her car? We, we yeah. do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Point where I think they're like, we don't know how to end this movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and it feels like at that moment they're like, wait, she would never give Sammy a ride. So they quickly wrote a scene where she meets Sammy earlier in the movie and he gives her the drugs so that they yeah. establish that relationship. Like I need, I need a ride a hundred yards this direction, please. <laughs> this small little village where everybody's right around the pier all the time. Anyway, Mike watch walks the beach and the disapproving lady, uh, looks at him. I think that's the last we see of her. Um, now it's nighttime. Carlos and Sammy are staking out Elizabeth's house. Carlos goes in and kills her. Why? Like, why? Well, she, he walks in. She, she, he walked in first. Right before to, she for gets home, sec, and then she comes home. And let's talk about this for one second. She was driving around 
got groceries or something with her kid. Yeah, and she, now her, it's like 10 her, at night. It's 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> she parks in her driveway, gets out of the car, turns off the car. It, it, it's winter in, in Massachusetts. Leaves the kid. So, so it's not warm. Leaves the kid in the car, goes into her house, goes, and it's not like, oh, she runs in, drops a bag, runs back out to the car. No, yeah. she goes in and starts unpacking the bag. I guess she's just so used to Peter yep. Peter picking up after her that she just, it's just like second nature. She's like, well, I'm sure I'm sure Peter's gonna grab the grab Henry. I mean, that's just what happens. <laughs> no, mother. I mean, listen. I know that there's stories of women like people forgetting the kid in the car, but usually, it's yeah. when you're doing something like going to work, right. not coming home. <laughs> The yeah. whole thing is ridiculous. I mean, I know it's based on a true story, and this isn't even what happened in the true story. The, the true story is that it was a garbage collector who did it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a certain smart. randomness to that. So I guess this is as random as that, I guess. But it just knowing Carlos like we do, I mean, Carlos knew better than to, to stab Mike in the bar. Why is he killing? Uh, yeah. He could have just ran away. I know. What's or she just gonna say do? like, I mean, hey. even if she bothered to call the cops, which she might not even, he could say, nah, it was not she around did, that. She did sort of seem to grab at the kitchen knife. No, oh, yeah. So sure. she was like, so, but even still, like, all he had to do was run away. He was, you know. All he had to do was not go in there in, and say, Sammy, <laughs> go ask her. Say, I forgot yes. my bag in your car. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> what it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Um, so, so anyway, he kills her, but then um, um, Sammy. It's, it's really weird when he kills her too. I mean, there's like this moment of looking, and then she closes the fridge, and they wanted it to be like a reveal. And there's yeah. like a bright it's, light on his face. It's and confusing. It's, yeah. It's like slow motion, but not. It's just sort of. Uh, you don't see the that like like it flashes back out. Side, and then the next thing you do is you see her on the floor. He's running back out to the car. You see the her on the floor with the blood, and then he gets back. Sammy gets out. He gets back in the car, and then Sammy gets out because he's concerned about the chi- the kid in the car getting frozen to death. Right. What a trajectory for for Carlos. You know, from the heights of the yeah. tuna. From the height of the catching the big fish. <laughs> yeah. All set. Anyway, anyway, uh yeah, like like you say, Sammy goes and grabs the baby. Doesn't consider look like the whole reason they're there is this bag of drugs. He knows he left it in her car. It's in her car right next to the baby. And um but yeah. he doesn't even look. He he takes the baby, and what a good guy Sammy is. He just plops the baby next to its de- its dead mother, you know, for God knows how long. Way yeah. way to go, Sammy. You know, I was I was beginning to like you. Uh, but of course, uh, Sammy probably knew. He's like, yeah, Peter. I'm sure Peter will be here soon. And uh, sure enough, Peter was there the next morning to discover. Elizabeth, um, now we're at the crime scene. Peter is breaking down. He's like uh, Oscar Schindler in Schindler's List, thinking like I could have saved another, you know. Except he's <laughs> like, if only, if only I'd stayed at her house even longer than than you know, sixteen hours a day, I would have been there to prevent the crime. I uh, wasn't the man I needed to be. He screams he and growls at Mike, calling him a murderer. And uh, Pete, I mean. It makes sense that you would think Mike did it, and Peter's the only one who seems to suspect that. Everyone else is like, no, of course he didn't, uh, you know. Um, and uh, so Nancy goes and takes the baby. I thought it was the disapproving neighbor, but we got a three-to-one vote that the it's not the disapproving neighbor, right, guys? Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's not. It's a different lady. It's so quick here. The way everything's <laughs> happening, it's like, all right, please tape still up. Baby, thank you. Bye bye. And then it's like Mike just goes in, and then they they put in a voiceover like, "Don't let him mess with the car, or that that car is still evidence." And he's like, "Just yeah. get in the baby seat." Like yeah. they had a plan. The the morning that her murder was discovered, be like, "Okay, we're taking the baby. We're making sure we get the baby seat, and then we're gone." 
<laughs> yeah, Jimmy. And we're yeah. Jimmy's so Jimmy's cool with <laughs> Jimmy it. Jimmy doesn't play by the 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 forensic rules. He's just you know he knows. Or any any rules about anything <laughs> like the adop- are they adopting the baby? Is there paperwork? Is it just? Well, I mean, he made him a sheriff with like no. <laughs> no that's true. <laughs> he and didn't he even want the job. He forced him to be a sheriff. You're uh, a sheriff now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, yeah, like you say, Mike gets the car seat, um, and there's the drug bag. Uh, they get home. Sammy, why does Sammy go to Mike's house? Who knows? He's a mess. His backpack uh, is in the car. He tells Mike. Now the police immediately now go. No, Mike, who goes to Sammy's house? Oh wait, whose house is that? It's Sammy's. That's house. Sammy's house. Oh, I thought it was Mike's house. Okay. No, we're... no, he, huh. Mike walks in. Mike walks in, and it's Sammy's house. Okay, why? And... He confronts because it's it's a different decor. It's like a red room. Okay. No, but remember the what? Remember the wife? Is that where she was stairs, napping? Remember, and she looks through the screen door and sees him, and then she like turns around, and then Mike comes in. I don't think Sammy has a house. <laughs> it's a nice, ha- not too nice for Sammy. Tom, I thought it was Sammy's house too, but now. <laughs> <laughs> so I was. I thought it was. So anyway, Might so we be. don't know whose house it is. It's Sammy's okay. mom's. House. Oh, well, now that leads to a new question. It could be Sammy's mom's house. You're absolutely right. Um, the police arrive at the house. If it's Mike's house, I was like, why are Mike was just there? Why are they arriving yeah, on the scene why of Mike's I house? It was Sammy's house, yeah. and that's why. And then Sammy runs out the back door. Okay. I thought maybe they came there because they knew they were friends and they're looking for him. And the local guys are like, he's probably over Mike's. Or Nancy called the police when she saw Sammy in there. And it's Correct. so close that. Oh, that could also that could be. be, that could be. <laughs> but should we really have to do all these mental gymnastics to figure out what is happening and where it is occurring? That's no. that's the ultimate point right there. It shouldn't it shouldn't be that confusing. <laughs> Uh, so now there's a chase scene. Uh, they head west on commercial, trying to follow him, <laughs> but they lose him. And the next day, his dead body is found by the rocks. Oh, poor Sammy. Uh, tragic. Was, it, was it his dead body? Yes. <laughs> because, because it didn't seem like the morgue. It's him. It, I mean, they said it was an ambulance, but I guess I, I, I was a little confused. Oh, they, whether like, he might be alive? Out of the body bag, you know? Oh, he's, well, he's I think dead. the way it was covered in the in the no. in the uh, seaweed, they were implying that it like went out with the tide, maybe, and then washed up. I, like, I mean, I thought he was dead, but then yeah. then when I saw it was an the only reason I questioned it later was because <laughs> then I saw that it was an ambulance, and like I was like, but doesn't seem like just. I mean, I know that they still call EMTs for when they find a dead body, but it's often like the it's like a cor clearly a coroner and not a. At EMT, you know what I mean, like. Yeah. But who knows? Small town, they probably don't have all the resources. Right. So. It's just right. Jimmy in there. <laughs> Jimmy just... does it all. He does all of it. <laughs> He's just a mixed-up kid, Jimmy. Mike says. Now, Mike seems to be implying that Jimmy should dig deeper into the the mystery of who killed Elizabeth. But um, Jimmy says, "Go home. This <laughs> chapter of your life is over." And, uh, <laughs> don't make yourself a suspect. He don't tells make your su- Yeah, you don't want your uh, son wondering if you killed his mother. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy just can't be bothered. I mean, don't try to solve the case because <laughs> you'll make yourself a suspect. <laughs> so then wow. Mike talks to his kids on the docks about heaven or God or something, and then the movie's over. So- okay, but <laughs> are we supposed to? Th- why is it? Why is it just his older kids? And not the like. Yeah, Henry's gone. Henry's not in that scene at all. And I thought that Tom and I were like, I was like, first of all, I thought that it was a scene that was like implied that time had passed. So like, it would have made more sense if there was at least another another child that was Henry there, and he was talking about like heaven and blah 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 because it's Nancy isn't dead. It's the Elizabeth who's dead, who's Henry's mom. So like, why would the other two kids even care about have like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just seemed like a very odd conversation yes. to end on. Yes, let's hear, let's hear it. We one one last quote. This is our longest episode ever. We're Coup we're we're a half hour longer than the movie itself. Let's uh let's hear this last clip. I need a little help. Like what? Sometimes uh, you no know, men would go out to sea and uh, to fish. 
and they wouldn't come back. Why? I don't know, maybe they got lost in a, in a big storm or something, you know? Maybe they went to heaven. Yeah, maybe they did. Yeah, they probably went to heaven. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so, it's so off theme and topic and... But it's nice. He's wearing think, his Knicks hat, by the way. The kid. I is. think they filmed that because the you know the the two kids are the Ageli kids, and they probably didn't have the baby again for another day of filming. So we're like, <laughs> all right, kids, you're filming another scene with Mike on the dock. Yeah. Let's let's, Do you let's think wrap it was, this up somehow. Do you think it was even intended for the end of the movie? Like I don't even know. Like what is? I don't know what's being what the, any of that has to do with anything. Anyway, it just sounds nice. The like, whole yes. thing is this this this. <laughs> This this plot, the, the what what's so sensational about the Krista Worthington story was the fact that there was like this 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 woman who was murdered, and then as they 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 are trying to solve who killed her, they discover the affair, they discover the illegitimate child. There's the friend who is sort of helping take care of the child, but they seem to have a platonic relationship. Oh wait, there's a real that's Peter. Peter's based on a real person. Peter is yeah. based on a real oh. person, and he was the one who found her, and was the, he he did take care of the child, and they had some sort of relationship, but it was over. I think he killed her, though. Uh, uh, yeah, and- the whole the trash man theory. It's just it's just amazing that all this drama surrounding this woman, and she ends up dead, and the killer was a random uh, trash collector. That's um, yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. But it's also hey. there's the, the trash collector was a black man who had some severe learning disabilities. Mm. So there's a lot of racial um, coloring of the case. So like there's a lot that's actually very interesting about this story and this yeah. case. And somehow this movie took none of the interesting parts. And, and but somehow ended up being out, endlessly entertaining, you know? It was oddly compelling. Like I was like, "Oh my god, what are we watching?" And then I, like, I had this. I was supposed to be reading this book, so I was like, "Well, I'll just have it with me." Tom hates this because I do this all the time when we're watching movies. Is like I have something I'm just like, like reading or whatever, and I like look up and kind of follow. But you couldn't look away from the screen, could you? Not. I was like, (laughs) I was like, what? It was just like a, it was like a train wreck. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't stop watching. Yeah, that's the the, the moment. The whole time through, you're like, wait, wait, what? Why? <laughs> wait, what? You got to work harder than normal. It's like it's from another planet. Kind it's of. really enjoyed. So I love this movie. Uh, I uh, even more than Coffee Shop. It's really good. Okay. Um, uh, w- way better than Coffee Shop. <laughs> coffee Shop. I, I was like, I, I said, I did say this to Tom. I said, listen, I coffee shop. I literally hated every single character in that movie. And Donovan was the absolute worst. And it had weird, like Christian overtones, which was were bizarre. Mm-hmm. But, but this, and so, and this one kind of felt like it could have had that sort of inspirational take, but it did, it did not. I mean, only that last scene where they talk about heaven, but like yeah. otherwise like pretty salacious lifetime melodrama type feel to it. Yeah. Um, but I I actually really like the character of Mike, like even though he's a total jerk throughout most of the movie. Like the actor who plays him is very likable, yeah. and he's like so put upon. <laughs> he just wants to be a fisherman, you know. Give the guy a break. <laughs> he just wants to be a fisherman. What do you, What are you gonna do? Yeah, I do. I do like that. That like that's, you know, all this stuff is going on in his life, and he's just like, I just want to be out in the the ocean by myself, you know. Doc and Gloucester be treated like good a god. Good hard people, <laughs> good too, food. Too much to ask. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really, really enjoyable. Obviously, you know, um, it's got so many flaws, but you add them all together and you get an A plus uh, from me. Um, <laughs> Murder on the Cape. Charlie, what was your review? Yeah, I, I think it's probably made with, uh, it's got that community movie kind of feel, which maybe earns it some bonus points. It does earn it some bonus points, yeah. I should say. Too much music. Was, too much music. I just yeah, yeah. That. That's, that, there's way too much music. That's like a post-production thing. But in the in the actual making like the of the production, this was a like a community thing. Uh, Especially Carlos was, and Sammy. Yeah, and Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, when I say community, I don't necessarily mean like community theater. I just mean like 
the, everyone around you who could help in any way is just helping mm -hmm. because this was not this is not big budget this is not a company that pumps out like 20 lifetimes or hallmarks or, or those kind of things a year you know the gellies have have made that many movies it's so, so uh, interesting that they choose this this real life case that's that's uh, so salacious and so you know dark um, yeah, it, it and they is cover it in this way, in this way that just doesn't dwell on like it's you know the murder happens when there's like five minutes left in the movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> so maybe they were able to make the movie they wanted, but get also the free press of yeah. the fact that it was in the press instead of saying let's just make yeah a crime picture or a murder picture that or just is a, it's really just a melodrama. Scratch. It's just a melodrama. It's just a mel yeah. It's a it's a melodrama, but it's good. At the very uh, end. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 at times when I was watching it, I, I was at the beginning. I was kind of like, "Oh, this is this is pretty heavy." But I've seen it twice now, and it's sort of wacky enough, and misguided enough, and there's a lot going on that makes you be like, not so sad about the the tragic things. Oh, so, no. um, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's it's like none of these people are real. There's no, you know. They're not reacting in a way that makes any sense. I mean, the fact that she goes straight into the shower, um, you know, from the beach, she doesn't need to shower, you know, as like yeah. Ava pointed out, it's cold, but it's just like cartoonish, you know. Yeah, and that 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 makes it a little easier. Tom, what's your review? Oh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, if you try to compare it to the the real, like we were saying, like I read something that they spent like twelve years reading about the case and then putting you know putting together the movie uh, i'm like I, I cannot how did you fail so miserably at that after all that time but you know it's it's really fun uh in a lot of ways and i i think in in a lot of ways they were actually building up to a, a very strange climax like you were saying like we you kind of feel like she is not that great you know, Peter is potentially, you know, in, in a position to want to to hurt her too. And then like Mike and like all these people, like all these circumstances are like building up to what could be a very like a mystery. Thing. Like it could be a mystery. Yeah, they, there's no red herrings. There's no, no mystery. They just show us what happened. It's so that's what makes the movie so bizarre to me is that this was like everything this was a this was a real who done it and and when it when this when this crime occurred it was a real who done it right and somehow they made this movie <clears throat> and they took away that mystery pretty early on like it was i it, early on i think it was my it was like definitely around the bar, that bar scene with the knife i turned to tom and i said and that's the killer. Carlos is the killer. Yeah. Done. Mm -hmm. Like done. That's where this is where this movie is going. Um, and so, like, to me, it's what's fascinating is like, how do you take this story that had all this potential and manage to make it make something completely different? And I'm not saying that what they made that was completely different was bad. I again, like, I enjoyed it. I thought it it was it was oddly compelling. Yeah. The performances were, you know, they were. They were actually pretty good for for a for a bunch of people who were for the most part not you know not professionals. Um, I just looked up the Agellis like I was just trying to look up the production company, but instead came across the Agelli Gallery, and it turns out that John Clayton, who's the guy who played Carlos, is an artist. Arthur Agelli is actually an artist too. He has he has really very nice paintings um, of the like. Cape. But it's like, you know, it's like th this is clearly a very like friends and family type production, which is which, you know, that's what, this is the kind of stuff you guys do. So that has its own charm. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's funny. It's not the murder is not a crime of passion. It's a crime of misplaced backpack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't need to see any of the passion leading up to it. You know, it, it's just so yeah. funny. It's yeah, so because the real life story had so much to it, like it was saying, that could lend itself to a complicated story. So you either start the movie with the murder and then you delve into the investigation or you build up the complicated circumstances leading up to the murder and leave it open ended. Yeah, they did, that they, she's just dead. Yeah, yeah. 
but then they couldn't like they couldn't help themselves like by like tying it up neatly for some reason. Yeah, the guy who kills her is the only guy who didn't know her. Right. Carlos. It's, it's fascinating, but I mean I I thought it was fun. I had a lot of fun. It's so watching. fun. There's so many quotable moments, you know. Um uh, you know, I just want I want T-shirts with every character's uh, face on them. You know, I want playing cards. It's uh, it's really good. You know, it it it's very similar to the room. Just it doesn't have a Tommy, you know, character. Yeah, yeah. that's so well, over I would the say top. That the the quality of the filmmaking and acting were actually better. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely better. Yeah, the room, the room is more true to itself in its own story arc, though. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying this one goes off. Yeah, it goes off the rails pretty pretty early on when it when it when it decides to to have this extended love affair between the the two characters. Like it just did not need to go that far into it. I don't think we got to track down um, the guy that Mike is based on and interview him. Uh, yeah. What he thinks of this movie? Tony Jacket. Tony yeah. Jacket. Jacket. jacket or jacket something like that no you're right yeah i know it's jacket yeah all right well um we'll get back to uh 70s and 80s horror movies next month uh for tom ava and charlie this is farley saying good night